My father was shot during Operation Banner in, at our home, uh, so I'll be thinking about him today. I hope they see that their sacrifice and their service has helped to contribute to the Northern Ireland that we have today. Ten miles southwest of Belfast, a thousand veterans of the Troubles parade through Lisbon's streets once again. They're marching to commemorate 50 years since the start of Operation Banner, the deployment of British troops to Northern Ireland at the height of the Troubles. The government thought it was the only way to restore peace, but it ended up being the longest military deployment in British history. But what was it like to serve at that time? We spoke to four veterans who wanted to share their stories. Literally going off all, all over the Northern Ireland, particularly in Belfast. It seemed the IRA at that time wanted to blow the, them out of the United Kingdom. Uh, homemade bombs, uh, car bombs, incendiary bombs, uh, and also shootings, and shooting at us. We would get hit with um, paint bombs, acid bombs, and um, what they were trying to do is breach the uh, seams of the ferret scout car so that the acid would drip down through the, 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 the gaps and land on the people inside. Paul Young was deployed in 1971 the year the government introduced internment for IRA suspects. The streets were volatile. Our main fear was people trying to tip our, our vehicles over, because they are quite small, even though they're heavy. But when you've got 50 or so guys around you lifting you up, and again, uh, 10 or 12 people jumping on top of it and trying to do all sorts of things to get their way in, uh, that's scary. You know, that, that it's really, really scary. Cities were hotly contested. Civilians on both sides, though, were caught in the middle. I remember just sitting there about two o'clock in the morning, just on call, just to say, to be there, a presence, and getting a knock on the battle hatch on the side of my driver's uh, ferret. I opened the battle hatch very slowly and quietly, and uh, there was this little old lady, and she had a, tr a silver tray with... Um, her best china, bone china, with some sandwiches and some cakes. And she said, and she was from the Catholic side, and she says, I wanted to give you, some, you guys something uh, because I can't do it during the day. And I have to be very careful doing it now because I could get into trouble. And she snuck away back into a wee terrace house. And uh, I thought that was one of the nicest things that you come across. But it just shows you that some of the people were scared to go against the IRA and other people that were literally controlling those areas. We'd gone through quite substantial training before you come over here, uh, but realistically, you're very young, you're 19 years old, and the patrol that I was in command of was ambushed by the IRA. Rob Hughes hasn't been in Belfast since 1991. From mixed emotions, feels strange. Um, first time I'll be back in a long, long time. So I don't know, it's going to take a little bit of time, I think. Why did you avoid coming back? I don't think I avoided it. It was... Obviously, I was injured over here, so uh, it, it seemed the logical thing not to come back at the time. Rob's battalion was tasked with carrying out foot and helicopter patrols. Four hours after this photograph was taken, his life changed forever. We were helicoptered out to an area near the border. Uh, I was near a road where I went to do a checkpoint. When I, mean, I looked towards the road, there were unmarked culverts, I had streams running under the roadway. So I decided to move away from the area because we'd been warned about the risk of a secondary device or the IED threat. And as I moved away, I came under a hail of automatic machine gun fire and I was hit with the first burst. The first I knew was a, a blinding white flash in front of my eyes and then an extremely sharp pain in my legs. And I sort of landed a significant dif dis distance from where I was hit on the floor. It was a provisional IRA. How many 
people was it? Do you know? There were three gunmen. Uh, it was a GPMG and two AK-47s. I was told that by the police subsequently. How would you describe those men or women? Cowards, end of. They knew, they picked these positions. They had, all, they had 365 days a year to pick what they were going to do, when they were going to do it. Um, when push came to shove, they just all they would do is turn around, run away and cross the border, knowing that we couldn't pursue them. Have you ever found out who it was that shot you? I was told names the very next day when I was in hospital, but unfortunately there were no arrests and it appears there was no real investigation into it either. Fifty years on from the start of Operation Banner, division is still visible. Allegiances and tributes displayed on buildings, the peace walls still stand eight metres high. The peace walls were built as a way to keep apart rivaling communities and there are around 97 of these kinds of structures in Belfast alone. Quite ironically though, after the Good Friday Agreement was signed, many of these got bigger in size and length. But now there are plans by the Northern Ireland government to get rid of them, maybe by 2023. Less than a mile from that gate, to the side of a Sinn Féin office, the Bobby Sands Memorial is a constant reminder that Republicans, who wanted Northern Ireland reunited with the South, gave their lives in protest for their beliefs. While in Londonderry, where families claim their loved ones were killed unlawfully by British troops on Bloody Sunday, General Mike Jackson's face can still be seen. You're not well liked there by many people, are you? No, I fear not. For many of the families I uh, no doubt represented everything they loathed about um, being part of the United Kingdom. Um, there's nothing I can do about that. Um, I have given evidence on the uh, Savile Inquiry and in the Barry Murphy uh, inquest. Um, the fact that I finished up as CGS and all of that uh, um, I suspect gives um, those who uh, are against me uh, their reason to, as you put it, demonise. It was certainly the Belfast I remembered. I was posted in the streets where I delivered newspapers um, just a couple of years before. So it was certainly the Belfast I remembered. I knew a lot of people. I certainly knew the area well. And three par had just moved from her up into Belfast. So I would doubt in a lot of patrols um, with, with older guys because they didn't have to worry about knowing where they were. I, I knew exactly where we were at all times. For John Ross, deployment to Northern Ireland meant coming home. But even though he was born and bred in Belfast, he believes being open about his military past comes with risk. I take the normal precautions that most veterans uh, take. I, I check the car and whatnot before I drive. It's a force of habit, but it's common sense and precautions. What are you looking for? You're looking for undercar booby traps, primarily. A lot of people say that Northern Ireland everywhere is safe for soldiers to go. Do you agree with that? No, no absolutely not. Um, you can go anywhere in Northern Ireland. Um, you could drive on any road anywhere. You certainly couldn't go into certain areas as a parachute regiment veteran what would happen to you if you did go to those areas? I shudder to think, but I probably wouldn't come out alive. But still they march, those who stayed and those who may be returning for the first time. For while Operation Banner has brought decades of controversy, marking 50 years since its start is a key milestone in history.